So today in this lecture, we are going to discuss the abnormal circulatory dynamics in aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation. Now, what happens to the circulatory system or what happens to the circulation? What abnormalities basically occurs when there is aortic stenosis or aortic regurgitation or both? Now, we will discuss uh, the abnormal circulatory dynamics uh, one by one. So first of all, uh, we will uh, consider it as a normal heart. Suppose, for example, this patient is having, uh, this person is having a normal heart and he will, is having absolutely uh, normal uh, dynamics. The blood is coming normally to the left, uh, uh, the right atrium, then it is going into the right ventricle from where uh, the it is going into the lungs, the, in the lungs the blood is being oxygenated and then it is coming back into the left atrium. From the left atrium it is going into the left ventricle and from the left ventricle it is going into the body. Now what happens that once there is stenosis, once there is stenosis or there is a regurgitation, now the heart will have some difficulty in pumping the blood through the stenosed uh, valve or when there is a regurgitation. Now some of the changes will occur in uh, stenosis prominently and some of the changes will occur in regurgitation. But most of the time, changes will occur in both of them. So, we will discuss both the changes in aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation in the same lecture. Now, the first and most important abnormality or the abnormal circulatory dynamic changes that occurs, the most common, the most important initial is hypertrophy of the left ventricle. Now, this is the normal left ventricle. This is the normal left ventricle. And what we see here is that this left ventricle here is, it is hypertrophied. It is hypertrophied or the muscle mass, this is the wall of the left ventricle. Here we have the wall of the left ventricle. It is normal in size. But when changes occur, especially when there is stenosis, especially when there is aortic stenosis or stenosis basically means there is a decreased decreased valve area when there is decreased area for the uh, pumping of blood or the the area through which uh, blood is going from the left ventricle into the aorta is uh, the area of that valve is decreased or it is stenosed then the heart has to pump the heart has to apply extra pressure it has to increase the extra uh, the pressure to pump the blood the same amount of blood through a small area which will basically create a nozzle effect which we have discussed previously now that extra pressure and that increase amount of uh, pressure force required for the left ventricle to pump that blood it ultimately leads to increase in the size of the left ventricle mass and it is known as the hypertrophy now if the there is a regurgitation if for example the blood is returning back into the left ventricle there is incompetent uh, aortic valve and once the blood has been pumped into the aorta it comes back into the left ventricle now the amount of blood that has to be pumped by the left ventricle in such a condition is very high now in such a condition such a condition there is basically increase in size of the left ventricle so there is increase in left ventricular size so this these are basically two abnormalities which occur now, both of these changes, the hypertrophy and the increase in the left ventricular size, it will lead to two things. It will lead to increase in the left ventricular systolic pressure and it will also lead to increase in the stroke volume. So, basically, there is some abnormality. There is some abnormality in the aortic uh, valve. Either there is uh, stenosis or there is uh, regurgitation due to which either the, 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 the left ventricle has to apply a lot of pressure to pump the blood to small area or a lot of blood is coming back into the left ventricle after pumping because they well. So these things lead to increase in, increase in the muscle mass, which is basically the hypertrophy of the left ventricle. And then again, the cavity size. If you see the cavity size of the left ventricle here and you see the cavity size here, you will see there is a very big cavity, the left ventricle cavity, the left ventricular size has increased. And if you see the muscle mass here and if you see the muscle mass here, you see a hypertrophy has occurred. Now, both these factors when combined, when the left ventricular hypertrophy and the LV size increases it leads to increased LV systolic pressure it leads to increased LV left ventricular systolic pressure or the pressure with which the this left ventricle is pumping the blood that pressure increases it may increase up to around 400 millimeter of mercury which normally is around 120 millimeter of mercury now the stroke volume also increases. now the stroke volume is basically the amount of blood which the left ventricle pumps in each contraction the amount of blood that the, the left ventricle or the right ventricle pumps in each contraction is the stroke volume, which normally is around 70 ml in a normal human being. In a normal human being of 70 kg, the stroke volume is around 70 ml. But due to increased, due to hypertrophy, due to increased left ventricular size, due to increase in left ventricular systolic pressure, due to increased... Uh, the, the, the stroke volume increases as well. Now, all these changes, the hypertrophy, the increase in the LV size, the increase in the left ventricular systolic pressure, the increase in the stroke volume, the, all these changes are basically compensatory changes. 
compensatory they basically try to compensate because there is some abnormality in the valve which is either not allowing sufficient blood to move due to stenosis or the blood is returning back either way the amount of blood that was pumped initially in a normal heart has basically decreased the pumping has decreased and the amount of blood going to the body is decreasing so to overcome that these compensatory changes occur and these are basically contributing contributing to the abnormal circulatory dyma dynamics of the aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation and in both the conditions up to some extent you will see hypertrophy up to some extent you will see lv size and then there will be increased left ventricular pressure and increased stroke volume now <clears throat> another uh, uh, another circulatory uh, abnormal circulatory change another abnormal change which occurs due to stenosis and regurgitation is the increase in the blood volume it is the increase in the blood volume now this is the normal heart this is the normal heart and the amount of blood it is pumping into the whole system this is the amount of blood pumping into the whole system this is normal but once there is hyper uh, there is either a stenosis or aortic regurgitation now the amount of blood that is pumped is decreased the amount of blood that is pumped is decreased decreased blood is being pumped so what happens is that there is decreased uh, there is decreased blood coming to the kidneys there is decreased blood coming to the kidneys so the kidneys basically try to retain a lot of fluid when the kidneys try to retain a lot of uh, fluid then on, on on top of that there is decreased arterial pressure there is decreased arterial pressure because the left ventricular the left ventricle is contributing to the arterial pressure when the left ventricular stroke volume is decreased or the left ventricular pumping is decreased there is definitely decrease in arterial pressure and due to decreased arterial pressure the kidney starts retaining the fluid the the urine output decreases and the other circulatory changes that occur due to decrease in arterial pressure all the changes the decrease in the uh, urine output the the retention of the fluid by the kidneys and the, the reflexes due to decreased arterial pressure all lead to increase in the blood volume there is decrease uh, sorry there is increase in the blood volume now here you see there is increase in the blood volume the blood volume in the human the, in that patient with aortic uh, stenosis or aortic regurgitation has increased now th the purpose of this change just like the purpose of hypertrophy and increased size is to maintain normal circulation because there is a decrease in arterial pressure which is being perceived as a decreased blood in the body so the body's the, the body organs like the kidney and the other uh, peripheries they try to conserve the fluid and they try to bring more fluid into the system so it they basically in a um, in a way increase the blood volume and this basically increased blood volume is basically trying to bring more blood to the heart so that more blood can circulate and more blood can go to the uh, different organs so all these are basically abnormal circulatory dynamic changes that occur in aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation so initially the heart size increase the muscle mass increase the systolic pressure increase the, the amount of blood that is pumped in each contraction the stroke volume increase then when uh, these cannot compensate the arterial pressure falls so the amount of blood see the amount of blood it increases now one factor for the increase in amount of blood is decrease arterial pressure but another factor is hypoxia hypoxia decreased oxygen supply to the organs uh, also lead to increased um, formation of blood so it also contribute to increase in the blood volume when all these changes has occurred and still still the uh, the circulation cannot return to normal because the abnormality the aortic stenosis or the aortic regurgitation has not been corrected and the problem is there then ultimately a failure of circulation can occur their cardiac failure can occur what occurs in cardiac failure is that there is decrease in the cardiac output there is decrease in the cardiac output and there is pulmonary edema now normally the this is for example normal circulation the blood is returning into the right atrium it is going into the right ventricle from here the right the blood is going into the lungs it is going into the left atrium left ventricle and finally it is going into the body but if, when there is aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation or either stenosis or either regurgitation and the whole system the whole circulatory dynamic dynamics changes or the abnormal circulation occurs abnormal changes occur in the body then what happens that after all these factors have uh, contributed the hypertrophy the increase lv size the increase lv pressure the increase in blood volume when all these changes have occurred and still the the heart cannot compensate what occurs in the end is that the hypertrophy the and the lv size increase the heart the heart size in general increase the heart size in general increase here the heart size is normal here we can see hypertrophy and increase in heart size has occurred now this heart is unable to pump enough blood which leads to decrease in the cardiac output when it is not able to pump enough blood the blood starts accumulating in the left atrium and the pressure goes back into the lungs and the blood starts accumulating in the lungs and pulmonary edema occur now here you see the blood in the lungs uh the the fluid in the lung uh, blood uh, sorry the fluid in the lungs is normal here a lot of fluid has accumulated in the lungs because there is a high pressure in the uh, left atrium because the left ventricle is unable to pump enough blood due to severe changes in the uh, aortic valve due to severity of the changes due to severe aortic stenosis or severe aortic regurgitation or both 
the left ventricle cannot pump enough blood so th that blood re remains in the left atrium which puts a lot of pressure back into the lungs and the blood starts uh, pulling into the lung and uh, in the end pulmonary edema can occur and heart failure can occur. So the abnormal circulatory changes that occur due to aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation include the, the hypertrophy or increase in the muscle size of the left atrium, then the increase uh, in the muscle mass, sorry, and then the increase in the LV size, then increase in the LV systolic pressure, then increase in the left uh, ventricular stroke volume, then finally increased blood volume can occur which all these factors can try to correct the circulate the circulation because the the left ventricle is unable to pump normal blood but when all these things fail the heart is unable to pump enough blood the blood starts uh, uh, pulling back into the uh, kidneys and heart failure can occur decreased cardiac output will occur and pulmonary edema will develop thanks a lot for watching the video